Airports across Northeast Florida, a pretty important component to a thriving economy, also an opportunity for growth. The new board chair from JAA joins us, sharing her priorities and vision for the next year. Plus, is it a civil war in the GOP? And within the Republican Party, there is a debate about what the crux of the party is and what it should stand for. You'll hear more of Senator Rubio's comments as our political analyst discusses the fracture in the party, the push for tax reform, and some of the local issues in our area, all on This Week in Jacksonville. So glad you joined us. Giselle Carson joining us this morning, appointed to the Jacksonville Aviation Authority by Governor Scott in 2014. She's now the chair of the JAA board in her first full term. Our friend Patrick Kilbane, the immediate past chair there. So this sounds like a great time just to talk about your vision for JAA now that you take over. Well, you may have heard me say that I, as a chair, my vision is to dazzle and delight our visitors, our flying customers in our community. So, uh, wow. That's what I want people to you, say. You want people to be wowed. Yes, I do. So, there's uh, some different components of that. Give, maybe give me some examples as we get into that on, on how the Aviation Authority is going to dazzle and delight. <laughs> We've been doing a good job at that, I think, so far. Our um, uh, executive team, our um, Steve Grossman, who's the CEO, does a phenomenal job. So, I want your viewers to know the JAA is, is, is doing well, and it's really well managed, and that's part of what the board does. But as part of this dazzling and delight, I w we want to bring in a little bit more spice to what's going on. And one of those examples actually is happening already. Um, I, we've been dazzling the uh, northeast Florida skies, I think, uh, with the developments in Cecil. And just a few days ago, Steve sent out a, a, a beautiful picture of an Antonov, which is one of the largest aircraft's uh, cargo in the world. And I'm like, Steve, what's going on? Yeah. Well, so two um, Antonov have been flying out of Cecil this whole week to Puerto Rico as part of the relief efforts. Yeah. So, and the staff is, is wild because they say, oh my gosh, these things are so big. They're carrying cherry pickers, trucker, trucks, um, and they're heavy, heavy. And they're like, are they really going to lift? And they do. Yeah. Um, so it, it's just been phenomenal that as, a, as, as part of, you know, the authority has been able to help our friends in Puerto Rico with the relief. So part of that is the development at, at, at Cecil, Cecil Airport. And I think a lot of people, if they've got history here in our area, you remember, remember what Cecil used to be in. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who say, boy, it's an underutilized asset in our region. Tell me a little bit uh, about that other component. You yeah. want, uh, I understand, uh, to continue adding passenger service uh, to JIA by uh, landing flights to and from Los Angeles. Yes. Tell me more. So we always, you know, passengers and the community in general is always asking us, where else can we fly direct? Right. Direct. Uh, yeah. yeah, because, you know. Atlanta. Just, yeah, Atlanta, <laughs> certainly. I do that a lot, and I'm sure many of us do. Right. Uh, but um, it, L.A., it, it, it's, it's interesting because it's, we, Jacksonville and Northeast Florida, is the most underserved market for them. And it's also one that we would like to develop. So the match is there. So we're working on it. And maybe hopefully by, you know, next year we'll have flights to L.A., to and from. So there's probably got to be some math involved there. Oh, totally. What is the demand versus what could be supplied? Oh. Are there specific airlines that you have to work with in that event that you're going to try yeah. and oh, find totally. how we do that directly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the airlines play a big role and obviously they have math that they have to say, okay, so going to be, you know, how many flights, how many people. Yeah. And yeah, but we're working those numbers and hopefully we'll have good news. I know some people in the Justice family who might uh, consider a direct <laughs> service <laughs> flight to the West Coast would be a, a great thing as well. Uh, maybe uh, tell us a little bit more about what you hope to accomplish here in, in your term as chair. It's a year-long term, right? Yeah. And again, Pat, as you mentioned, did a phenomenal job as, as chair. And really, I just want to build on us. In a, in a year, it goes by so fast. There's not a lot that you can do except to continue to support the good work that has been done. Um, and I don't know if many people know in our community, I really learned a lot from just being on those board meetings and what we do. But JAA supports, has about 10,000 employees in the area. And we support... Wow. About okay, I didn't realize that. 10,000 employees yes. in the area. Well, that's because we're not talking about just the Jacksonville International Airport that it. most people think of. What are the other so airports we that are So we have four airports that we support. So Cecil, and, and again, he's, that's the one that has been driving the growth. So Cecil, 
Jacksonville International Airport, Jack Sachs, and Herlon. So four airports yeah. within the area, all very distinct, all with their own character. And again, my, my goal is to continue to support the growth and, and efficiency in all of them. So 10,000 employees, we support over 26,000 jobs in the area. And J, JIA handles between five to six million passengers safely and happy every year. So that's a big deal. Uh, so I certainly con want to continue to, to support that. And again, the growth at CISO is, is, is really important and something that your viewers may not know, but I'm really, look, I love parties and celebrations. And this We're gonna year, do that at the airport we now. are, we are, we definitely are. So be on the lookout. For, we're what celebrating we yeah. our 50th anniversary, JIA's 50th anniversary of service. So in 1968 um, is when the airport was open as JIA. Yeah. So we've we're that's this going to be a year of celebration. So yeah. look forward to that. So what we'll wrap up here. What would be new coming to the airport, uh, the Jacksonville International? When I think of that. So one of the things that we're doing is a beautification pro project. Um, again. Jacksonville Airport is the gateway to many people coming for the first time, sure. and even for us. I mean, I like a nice airport when I come and go. Sure. Um, so we should be seeing new uh, signs that are being put up. It's going to make the airport look a little nicer, friendlier. And we're also working on a mural to celebrate the 50th anniversary of JIA. So that's also something to look forward to. And, and all excited about. Yeah. Well, I always look forward to getting a visit with you. Lots of energy whenever we talk with you, <laughs> Carson. So thank you so much. Congratulations on uh, taking over as the chair, but uh, lots of work to do, I'm sure. Thank you for the opportunity. Always good to be here. Thank you. All right. Well, tax reform, that's pretty important. Will the current administration be able to get there? Rick Mullaney joins us as we look at what many are calling the fractured Republican Party. That's next on This Week in Jacksonville. When you've been in an accident, there's going to be a lot to deal with. And we will help you through that whole process. But in the end, our goal is to give you the financial breathing room to be able to make decisions that's best for you without feeling rushed. That you don't have to make those decisions under stress and under pressure. Let us do all the work to get you the money that you deserve. That's what we do for our clients. That's what we can do for you. Harold and Harold, don't settle for less than you deserve. Make rush hour an adrenaline rush with the 2017 Nissan Altima. Now with Nissan Intelligent Mobility, featuring automatic emergency braking that can help you stop safely and keep you out of a jam. Automatic emergency braking, now on Nissan Altima and Sentra. Take on today and save up to 4,800 on Altima or save up to 10,760 on select models. Welcome to Travel Camp RV. Jacksonville's only locally owned RV stores. We specialize in towables so we can keep our overhead low and our prices low. So you get the guaranteed best deal on a new or used fifth wheel, travel trailer, camper, and more. Travel Camp was voted Jacksonville's number one RV dealer with an industry best 4.8 review rating. Make your weekends count with a family fun machine for under $200 a month. Since 1982, we've helped more families make more great memories. Shop our red tag specials at travelcamp.com. What if we told you the best internet for your home was also a great value? Introducing Xfinity XFi. Discover how much more you can get out of internet with the speed, coverage, and control you need throughout your home. Call 1-800-949-1010 and get started with Xfinity Internet for just $19.99 a month for 12 months. Xfinity delivers the best in-home Wi-Fi experience to keep everyone rocking online. With speed you can count on for an incredible price or upgrade for access to Xfinity Wi-Fi and stay connected with millions of hotspots nationwide. Call 1-800-949-1010 and get started with Xfinity Internet for just $19.99 a month for 12 months with a 30-day risk-free money-back guarantee. Xfinity XY will change the way you Wi-Fi. You can view all the connected devices in your home and manage Wi-Fi to any device at any time. See for yourself how much value you can get out of Internet built to keep up with your family. Call 1-800-949-1010 today. I'm Robert Palmer, president of RP Funding and owner of the Jacksonville Armada. Interest rates have unexpectedly dropped, creating an opportunity to lower your monthly mortgage payment. 
You can take advantage of this huge potential savings by refinancing with RP Funding. And as always, I'll pay all your closing costs. I've paid over $20 million in closing costs for homeowners just like you. So now, let me pay yours. Go to rpfunding.com or call today. Go Armada. 28 years on the force, putting hundreds of criminals behind bars. Officer Wilkie and his canine solved some of Jacksonville's biggest cases. I'll never forget, you know, lifting up a tire and there were the remains. And, and it's just, um, you know, it's, it's, it's somebody's child. Only on News 4 Jacks, tales from behind the crime scene tape. And how his dog Gator is responsible for saving his life multiple times. Street Stories. Monday, starting at 5 on News 4 Jacks. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. Thanks for staying with us. So one of the things that we've done over the summer now into the fall is talk about the uh, application process for becoming a U.S. citizen. Part of that is passing that civics test, which covers important U.S. history and government topics. A hundred civics questions on the naturalization test. Just wanted to give you a sample. Here's one of them, and we'll give you an answer in a little bit. Here it is. Name one right only for United States citizens. And then kind of the bonus question, how long does someone need to be a U.S. citizen in order to run for president? That was also a hint. The answer is coming up after our next interview. And our next interview starts right now. Our political analyst for News for Jax is Rick Mullaney, the director of the Public Policy Institute at JU. And as we talked about things that really are, are kind of humming that we could talk about, one of the things that leapt to mind was what's going on within the Republican Party on that federal level. Well, it was a dramatic week. You saw Senator Corker one day this week taking on the president. And then that afternoon, you saw Senator Flake from Arizona announcing he was not going to seek re-election, taking on the president. Deep divide within the Republican Party. That's not new. That predated Donald Trump. I believe the, what used to be the, the Tea Party and the establishment was more ideological. Today with Trump, I believe it's more cultural, but there is certainly a deep divide within the Republican Party today. I want to give you some of the background if you didn't catch it earlier. President Trump, by the way, this week is claiming that there is, in fact, great GOP unity, despite what happened Tuesday with uh, those two fellow Republicans. So I want you to hear right now from the president and then hear some of those initial comments against him from the senators. We have actually great unity in the Republican Party. There's great unity in the Republican Party. I hope that we've reached a, a tipping point of some type uh, where we don't uh, continue to normalize uh, by being silent the, the kind of behavior that we've seen. Mr. President, I rise today to say enough. All right, so there's just a sample. And after taking to the Senate floor to denounce the president's behavior as reckless, outrageous, and undignified, Senator Flake, you saw there, said, okay, it's time for Republicans to stand up to the White House. Uh, how does this impact things going forward, including the president's agenda? Well, in the near term, many people believe this is somewhat of a victory for President Trump because he maybe will get somebody more favorable out of Arizona and maybe somebody more favorable, supportive out of Tennessee. But in the long run, I do believe there's the agenda and there's also the coalition for his reelection. Remember, Kent, in politics, all tracks are round. And when, <laughs> and when uh, Senator McCain cast the vote on health care, a couple years earlier, Donald Trump had been taking on, in very disparaging fashion, Senator McCain. So you need to add to your base. That's the traditional view. Donald Trump is playing to his base. Uh, but I do think this fracture is real. It's sort of the Donald Trump, Steve Bannon wing versus the establishment. Today, this appears to be the party of Donald Trump and Steve Bannon. How that plays out in the long run, we'll have to see. So maybe a short-term victory, but could be a long-term not so good. I think this division within the Republican Party is very real. Uh, President Trump's portrayal of uh, great unity is a bit optimistic. I know he'd had a positive lunch or breakfast that morning. Uh, but if you take a look at the battles he's had with McConnell, with, he, with McCain, with others, there, there's a deep fracture in the Republican Party today. Well, let's bring it to uh, one of the names you know from Florida, U.S. Senator Marco Rubio. He says that realignment is happening in both parties, not just the Republican Party. I called it a moment of realignment for both political parties and for every institution in society. You got to, you know, the whole statement's got to be taken. In. And what that means is we're living in a time of incredible changes and in realignments, economic realignments, geopolitical realignments, cultural realignments, societal realignment, and everybody. The media is having to reinvent itself. Political parties are having to reinvent themselves uh, to, to sort of uh, deal with uh, the new realities. And within the Republican Party, there is a debate 
about what the crux of the party is and what it should stand for. It's a big party with a lot of different views and a lot of different issues. I would argue the same thing's happening in the Democratic Party, where all of the energy right now seems to be in the sort of Bernie Sanders wing of the party. And that's not where Joe Biden or some other people, or certainly Bill Clinton, came from 25 years ago. So it, this is happening everywhere. It just so happens that when you have a president and majorities, you're going to get more attention on some of the internal debates that are happening. What do you think about that assessment, Rick? Um, I believe he's right. There's a, there's a deep de divide within the Democratic Party. I don't necessarily share his view on this realignment relating to policy. The fracture in the Republican Party, in my opinion, is really not as much about policy. There's still a general consensus on tax cuts, for example. There's a consensus on military spending. There's a consensus on deregulation. There's not a consensus, for example, on trade and on immigration. But generally speaking, the divide is not about policy. And in many cases, it's not even about politics. It's about the tone of the party, the anger of the party, the direction of the party, the behavior of the party. And I think that divide is a very serious one. And that's a lot of what Senator Flake was talking about. That's what Senator Corker was talking about. Sort of the heart and soul of the Republican Party is really at stake right now. And I don't think it's as much about policy. It is about the tone and direction of this party. So what I'm hearing you say, sir, is that uh, two people could say the same thing, that's the policy part, yeah. hey, here's what's really important, but the way you say it is what's causing some of these fractures. Yep. You could say, you're going to do it my way, and this is what the policy is, or you could say, hey, we think that this is the real... Is that what you're getting at? Well, a little bit, but before, let me give you an illustration. We're going to talk about tax reform. I believe that despite the division in the Republican Party, there is momentum gaining for the passage of a comprehensive tax reform package. I think there's very likely to happen, particularly with what happened with the, the, the House this week in passing the, the budget resolution. So I think when it comes to increased military spending, when it comes to tax reform, when it comes to deregulation, when it comes to the economy, despite the divisions, the party will come together coalescing around policy. However, in terms of the politics and the tone and the direction, the personal disparagement, there is a very deep divide. That's why I say that I believe this is more cultural than it is ideological. But make no mistake, it is very real. And I agree with the senator. There's a deep divide in the Democratic Party also, but the Republican parties are the ones who control the House and the Senate right. and the White House. So they get a lot of the attention yeah. when, it, when it comes to this. And just to piggyback off what Rick was saying, uh, the House of Representatives kind of cleared the way to fast-track tax reform legislation, kind of barely. They passed a budget resolution allowing the Senate to uh, approve the legislation with a simple majority rather than that re yep. required yep. 60 votes. Uh, but the Republicans lost some Republicans along the way. I think 20 voted, uh, uh, and instead of voting in favor of it, 20 Republicans voted against it. Right? 20 House Republicans voted against it, primarily from New York, from California, and from those states that have high state and local income taxes, state taxes. Yeah. And the reason for that is that this tax reform package eliminates deductions from those states. This will be problematic in this reform package. This is sort of at the top of the contentious issues. I actually think that's going to change. Here in Florida, that means for our listeners, for example, our viewers, you don't get a deduction for your property taxes or your sales taxes. That's a big issue. In the end, it appears legislation is going to be introduced this week. The House wants to pass it before Thanksgiving. Senator McConnell would like to get it done before Christmas. That's very ambitious, very heavy lift, but there is some momentum to getting that done. Well, I think uh, we've got a beautiful thing if you're a Florida resident and you don't pay that income tax. Places like California, my native state, I don't want to move back there because that, that income tax burden is so high. And if you can't write it off your taxes, it the burden feels even heavier, right? It does, and I think one of the compromises you may see is it may be that you allow states to elect. You may be able to deduct your property taxes or be able to deduct your state income taxes, but this is the top of, this is one of the issues that's gonna have to be resolved because there are Republican legislators from those states yeah. are very concerned about it. Now remember, there aren't too many Republican senators from those states, so this right. battle will be fought in the House. Right, I appreciate it. So Rick's not going anywhere. We're gonna have more with Rick. And as we move on, we're going to talk about why the state here seems conflicted about helping people from Puerto Rico. More on that next on This Week in Jacksonville. We're Pollo Tropical, where the freshest ingredients meet our time-tested recipes. Where our chicken is marinated in citrus juices and spices for 24 hours, then fire grilled. Where we make our food fresh every single day. And our chefs are adding more variety to our menu. For a limited time, get a quarter chicken and our new fresh barbecue ribs served with one side for just $7.49. We're Pollo Tropical, but you can call us Pollo. Hold on, Jill's texting me. You have a message from Jill. 
Can't wait for tonight clapping hands, thumbs up, face with tears of joy, taco, unicorn, smiling pile of poo, winking face with stuck out tongue. Well, Jill's excited about dinner tonight. Totally. The new Buick Encore with Apple CarPlay support for iPhone. Smiling pile of poo? Maybe she's walking her dog. Current Buick or GMC lessees. Get this low mileage lease on this 2017 Buick Encore for around $199 per month. First apartment, 60-second rotini. Here we go. Hi, honey. Hey, Mom. Are you eating well? Uh, yeah, I'm actually making something right now. New Barilla Ready Pasta. Deliciously al dente in just 60 seconds. Simply add your favorite ingredients that looks and enjoy. Amazing. Hey, there you go. I can almost smell it. New Barilla Ready Pasta. 60 seconds to wonderful. El elbow. Oh, sorry, Mom. This is a Hurricane Irma insurance alert. In the coming weeks, crooks and predators will be approaching you hoping to take advantage of you at your most desperate hour. Many will even try to take a portion of your insurance benefits, leaving you with less money to rebuild your life. Please don't let them do it. To learn more, visit HurricaneLawyer.com and download a free copy of our Hurricane Bill of Rights. That's HurricaneLawyer.com. Morgan & Morgan, for the people. Getting more for your money is good, but getting a whole lot more for way less, that's better. Like on the Hyundai Elantra with available blind spot detection, a feature you won't find on Toyota Corolla. Get your 2018 Elantra for just $149 a month, or the redesigned 2018 Sonata for only $159 a month, or buy with zero down. Both include America's best warranty. Better is the reason to buy Hyundai. Lease a new 2018 Elantra for only $149 a month, or buy with 0% APR for 60 months, plus $1,000 bonus cash. Hurry in today. 28 years on the force, putting hundreds of criminals behind bars. Officer Wilkie and his canines solved some of Jacksonville's biggest cases. I'll never forget, you know, lifting up a tire and there were the remains and, and it's just, um, you know, it's, it's, it's somebody's child. Only on News 4 Jax, tales from behind the crime scene tape and how his dog Gator is responsible for saving his life multiple times. Street Stories, Monday, starting at 5 on News 4 Jax. And here's the answer to our citizenship test. Name a right only for United States citizens. Really, there are only two, to vote in a federal election and to run for federal office. So here's the bonus question. How long does someone need to be a U.S. citizen in order to run for president? A couple ways to answer this. You could say all your life or 35 years. And a candidate must be a native-born citizen, not naturalized. Also, a candidate has to be at least 35. That's the answer there. And here's a twist that I didn't know about. The, must, the candidate must have been a resident within the United States for at least 14 years. All right, so Florida has already spent millions on Puerto Ricans fleeing the island territory. The Senate Budget Committee in the state capitol has been told that hundreds of millions more is likely going to be needed. State Senator Victor Torres made an impassioned plea to the state's budget writers this last week. Send money aside for the thousands of Puerto Ricans who have already come or will come to Florida in the near future. I ask you for appropriate action as if it was your family members who are suffering in the same circumstances. State Education Commissioner Pam Stewart told the Budget Committee that students are already impacting Florida schools. We have a count of 3,066 statewide from Puerto Rico and 4,074 from the Virgin Islands. While lawmakers say they support the influx of Puerto Ricans, they are unhappy the governor is spending money without consulting them. An aide to Governor Rick Scott got an earful over the office's spending of more than $700,000 on three centers to help Puerto Ricans come to Florida. There is, seems to be a question about whether the pure reading of the governor's power on the emergency order gives that authority. An estimated 60,000 Puerto Ricans are already here, many starting to wear out their welcome with relatives. There's a law that limits the, uh, the amount of people that can be the occupancy for a dwelling. And some people are being threatened with eviction. Some have already been evicted. And after pressure from lawmakers, nurses and other professionals will find it easier to work in Florida as the state adopts expedited licensing requirements. And Rick, the state is waiving licensing fees for the professionals for 30 days, trying to give them a chance to uh, work and get back on their feet before they have to pay for their licenses. So what do you think about this argument uh, as the executive branch able to order this money spent and the legislative branch saying that's our role? 
Uh, I don't think this is really about money. I think this is about politics. And by politics, I mean you have a growing Puerto Rican population in the state of For Florida, particularly in central Florida in the Orlando area. That population has grown from about 13% of the state's electorate to 16% just in the last few years. And there's the overhang next year of the U.S. Senate race and the governor's race and uh, lots of other races. Yep. And so I think what you're seeing both in the legislative branch and in the executive branch Lots of support for Puerto Rico. And there's sort of a race to who can be the one to give the appropriations to help out. Remember, Hurricane Maria was devastating. Yeah. The island was devastated. That's very, very, very real. People do want to help, but I do think politics is playing a role in who gets the credit for providing that help. Yeah, well, you mentioned something I want to focus on here. There was a, a recent uh, UNF poll on this as political insiders look to, to whether term-limited Republican Governor Scott is going to run for the U.S. Senate. So this new poll shows that if he does, incumbent Democrat Bill Nelson is going to have that tough battle ahead. This poll conducted this month by the University of North Florida's Public Opinion Research Lab. 37% of the registered voters polled statewide chose Nelson. 36% choosing Scott. 20% saying they didn't know who they'd vote for. And so these two politicians, they've got strong support within their own parties. 66% of registered Democrats in the poll intend to vote for Nelson. 68% registered Republicans said they would vote for Governor Scott. Registered voters also asked how they thought President Trump is doing and got that 59% of voters polled strongly or somewhat disapproving of how the president handling his job. 37% say they approve of his job performance. So let's focus just on that Senate race component. Governor Scott hasn't said he's running for that, but in our final minute or so here, Rick, that looks like it could be a really close race. It does. Everybody believes Senator Scott uh, Governor Scott will be running for that position. Senator Nelson's very formidable. Governor Scott is very formidable. This will be quite a race. And not only will it get statewide attention, it will get national attention. This is one where the defendants, ha uh, where the defendants, where the wow. Democrats, the Democrats yeah. have the, forgive a former prosecutor, I'm you. they have the incumbency, <laughs> they have the incumbency. And so a win here would be a big deal for the Republicans to pick up a seat, for example. The stakes will be high. It'll get national attention. And for the earlier conversation on a poor appropriations for Puerto yeah. Ricans coming here, I think is very much tied to the politics of next year's races. And, and, and the, the climate of running for public office, especially federal office, those candidates are going to feel like defendants uh, <laughs> throughout the course of what happens into 2018. Rick, I appreciate your insights. Always great to visit with you. Thank you. All right, so this week in Jacksonville airs each Sunday morning of this time. Agriculture Commissioner Adam Putnam is joining us next week. He's also a candidate for governor in 2018. I'm Kent Justice. Thanks for watching on air on Channel 4 and online. Always go to newsforjax.com. People get their news from News 4 Jax, Jacksonville's number one source for local news.